Was Australia inhabited by humans over 80,000 years ago? And did the colonization of Eurasia begin from that continent some 65,000 years ago? Here we highlight discoveries fundamental to a revised timeline for human occupation of Australia, also indicative that this continent was the source for migrations that later colonized the Eurasian continent. In July 2017, University of Queensland scientists concluded a study of artifacts excavated at a rock shelter in Arnhem Land, Northern Australia. The minimum date for the site was revealed to be 65,000 years. However, some objects at the site were estimated to be around 80,000 years old, or at least 95% likely to be older than 70,000 years. Dr. Schwenninger, head of the Luminescence Dating Laboratory at Oxford University, commented on the find noting that although the study had been well done, he felt the dates might be rather conservative and would not be at all surprised if they were later pushed back. Occupation of Australia should have begun on the northern coast and therefore we would expect to see the oldest archaeological sites in that area. Therefore, the discovery of an ancient Shell Midden site at Point Ritchie on Australia's southern coastline goes entirely against conventional expectations with dates suggested of around 70 to 80,000 years old. The investigating geologist, Dr James Bowler, perhaps the most respected geologist in Australia, responsible for dating the Lake Mungo Man finds, commented on the site saying that, having examined it, he found that the shells were sitting below a very thick soil, a thick layer of cowcrete, and that that cowcrete in Australia takes at least 20 to 30,000 years to form. That's sitting underneath the Tower Hill Tuff at 35,000 years. So we've got Tower Hill at 35,000 plus a minimum for the cowcrete of 25,000 to 30,000, which takes you back to 70,000 for the soil evidence, 80,000 for the shell evidence. So we've come up with an age of 70 to 80,000 years for the shells with a preference of 80,000, says Bowler. Pushing back the dates of Australia's occupation from 50,000 to 80,000 years is radical, but if additional academic studies are considered here, it becomes clear this adjustment is still not radical enough to encompass all of the data. One 2008 climate study, headed by researchers associated with the University of Tasmania, claimed to have found evidence that humans were deliberately burning sections of forest, known as fire stick farming, around the Lake George region of New South Wales, 120,000 years ago. The Lake George data did not exist in isolation. Evidence for fire stick farming had previously emerged from a Monash University study involving core sampling at the Great Barrier Reef site. This 1992 project involved the same geologist Jim Bowler and also a leading climate scientist Dr Peter Kershaw. Dr. Peter Kershaw noted that it all seemed to be fitting together and that the fact that these changes started down on the coast fits in with ideas about Australia being colonised first along its coastal regions. The presence of modern humans in Australasia over 70,000 years ago has significant ramifications for the understanding of the colonisation of Eurasia. According to multiple genetic studies, ancestors of modern Eurasians arrived on their continent between 70 to 60,000 years ago diverging from an ancestral population some 65,000 years ago, this being a product of multiple genetic studies. All mtDNA haplogroups outside of Africa are directly related to either the M or N haplogroups. These two haplogroups are calculated to have arisen around 60 to 65,000 years ago, somewhere in South Asia. The M and N lineages are both carried by Australasians, but not ancient Africans. The parent haplogroup, known as L3, is understood to be 80,000 plus years old, and there has been suggestions that it could be an East African origin, but it might also potentially be an Asian lineage. Attempts to explain anomalies in the Out of Africa migration model have involved suggestions of multiple migrations from Africa, with Australian Aboriginals representing remnants of an early wave. A series of recent gene studies have conclusively shown that modern Aboriginals and Eurasians share direct ancestry and that a single wave of migrants populated Eurasia. These revelations are incredibly problematic for the standard models. 
especially when considering that Asian archaeologists have uncovered the fossil remains of modern humans at cave sites across China, associated with a period earlier than the established colonization events. In at least one instance, the dates suggest early modern humans living in China 178,000 years ago. A leading Chinese paleoanthropologist, Professor Wu Xingxi, of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing, commented on these finds, saying, it's increasingly clear that many Asian materials cannot fit into the traditional narrative of human evolution. I agree with Wu Qingxi's comments, but would go further, suggesting a new human origins narrative which is far more coherent. If we understand that 73,800 years ago the Lake Toba supervolcano erupted on Sumatra, causing an enormous extinction of Eurasia's first modern humans, things begin to make a lot more sense. The nuclear winter which gripped the northern hemisphere for thousands of years would have decimated the human population. The human migration into Eurasia 65,000 years ago was then in fact a post-Toba recolonization, headed by ancestors of today's Australasian Aboriginals, who had been kept safe from the Lake Toba devastation by merit of the fact that they had a sub-equatorial positioning for their territories. This research explains why the most ancient populations outside of Africa are found in Australasia and Southeast Asia, not in the Levant or in the Middle East. 